this video we'll be covering operator instructions for setting up and using a surface map. The first item to be accomplished is we need to work from the top. It's highly suggested that you do your surface mapping from a top surface. This is easily accomplished by going into menu, pressing enter, and then we need to follow these instructions by setting max depth and then surface. I'm going to say OK to this and exit. So I'm going to go to the max depth first. My surface probe will fire. I'm going to move over to my phenolic and I'm going to press zero. I'm now going to set surface. This is either the material top that you want to set uh, to utilize for your mapping. I'm going to press zero and set the surface on the top. Okay. Next we need to go into the advanced menu, come down to surface map settings, and we're going to enable this. Now your active map here is a grayed out menu item telling you that the current map even though there may not be anything in map one will be one through four is is map number one now in order to set up a uh, a new map you're going to go into set up dimensions this is a macro driven um, program that allows to walk you through the steps of getting a uh, surface map done so we're going to press enter on this it will ask you to use a laser pointer. These crosshairs um, allow you to easily see where to start and move off to, but in, not every machine has a laser pointer. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say no. The Z axis lifts up all the way to a safe position, and then I can press one to bring my surface probe down, and then I can move down to an area where I can physically see where I want to get started and press enter. Now I can move over and away all the way to the back uh, location or the end location. We can only do rectangular shape areas and I'm going to press enter. Now it's going to ask me for a step size. If you're truly doing the full table, um, I would suggest something like two or three inches or 50 millimeters to 75 millimeters as a general step size because we're going to spline all of the z-axis uh, points so that uh, an entire map across the area will be provided. In this case I'm doing a really small area so I'm only going to do one inch or 25 millimeters and I'm going to pray, uh, say yes to this and what's going to happen is the z-axis will lift up and then wrap it down to two inches above where I set surface and do the first point. Now, the, the, where the first point starts may be on the left or it may be on the right, depending on how many points it determines. And it will come as close to the one inch or the input distance as it can based on your X and Y start locations and end locations. All right, now that the map is finished taking in all the points, it's gonna ask you to choose which location you want to have. I already have a map location in one, so I'm gonna go over to location two and press enter. It, it prompts me that I have something in two, so I'm gonna say yes, I wanna override it. All right, so now I have a surface map. Operators can know that a map is active by seeing this star icon by the z-axis. But to know which map of the one of four is actually active, you need to go into the surface mapping menu and it tells you that map two is active. If I wanted to actually load a different map, I could come in here and let's say I wanted to do one Notice that it did not refresh, but if I exit out and come back in, it will show you that, that now the active map is location one. I actually can um, upload 
this surface map, I can bring in all the Z pin, uh, uh, pins from this map and look at them if I press Upload Surface. When I uploaded the surface map, it was saved to this folder called Digitize. So whatever the file folder location is here, the default is CDNC Files Digitize. Um, you can go there and actually open this file and take a look at it. So I'm going to come over here and look at Z depth. And you can see here that um, you can actually see how I put a piece of odd shaped uh, material underneath my surface of material to create this dome um, at 165 thousandths. So um, this allows you to actually take a look at the different points for your surface mapping. There's a few things about the surface map uh, submenus that we should go through. So if we come in here, um, obviously if you have a surface uh, mapped, uh, it doesn't always have to be active. You could just simply come in and disable it. For example, if you have a jig that you have mapped uh, and then you're going to put a spool board on that's going to, that you're going to fly cut flat, then you don't really need to have a surface map. You can just disable it and therefore you would see that the asterisk beside the Z is now disappeared. So some other settings that we want to look at in the surface map settings is um, down here at surface map params. This is uh, some more of the very specific uh, menu items like uh, when it touches off on each point it's going to lift up half an inch. You may need this to be uh, higher or you may want this to actually be less. Um, you can set up some very specific start and end positions. Uh, once again, this is all based off of hard home. You can define exacting step distances and all this down here will allow us to have the total number of samples provided. Now this tolerance down here is if for any reason the probe falls off from your standard surface, like say there's a, uh, a pretty significant dip in your material or um, a hole from the last uh, taken Z spot, if it's greater than 50 thousandths uh, in this case uh, or whatever value you put in here, it will ignore that point and move on to the next one. So the, this tolerance is uh, should be something that's um, significant enough that you're talking about a drop-off. 